Angela Senadella is an attorney and legal analyst out of New York. She joins me now to break down this case. Welcome. Thanks for joining us tonight. Was there anything that surprised you about this verdict and this case in general? Look, this was not an easy case for the prosecution to win with specific regards to the lead count of sex trafficking, which accompanies with it a prison sentence of up to 40 years. So even though there were a lot of witnesses, there were a lot of victims in this trial, this sex trafficking count specifically only has to do with one of the accusers. And that accuser was Carolyn, an anonymous woman. So if you take a look at what the jury had to do, they had to convict her based off of this one woman's testimony from 20 years ago. The defense also had this very famous female psychologist testifying that memories can just evaporate over time and get very confused. So if you take a look at how powerful that one woman's testimony was to put Ghislaine Maxwell behind bars potentially for up to 40 years, that's surprising. Uh, her defense basically was that she was a scapegoat, right? Because Epstein was no longer alive. He wasn't available to be punished. So uh, what do you make of that argument? If he were still alive, would all of these charges been brought against Ghislaine Maxwell so aggressively? I think they still would have because the prosecution here was making a huge point, which is that anybody who is facilitating or abetting or aiding in a crime as heinous as this should be held responsible. But I do think the question remains as to whether or not the accusers would have felt comfortable testifying against Ghislaine or against Epstein or whether or not the pilots who also had testimony in this case where they claimed that Ghislaine was so clearly the number two in this operation, would they have felt comfortable? Obviously, the prosecution's case here here relied solely on these testimonies. So that's the question. Yeah, and that's also something that kind of gets lost in this whole story in this media circus, right, is the victims. What do you think they're getting out of this conviction? Do you think there can ever be any semblance of closure? I certainly hope so. I also think there's a message to victims across the country that even if something happened decades ago and it's against powerful people, that you still have hope. But what I do think is interesting here is that usually I would suggest that these victims should take this guilty verdict and go to a civil court to sue Maxwell's estate here for damages. But there do seem to be revelations that because these victims received compensation from Epstein's special fund, they signed a release, they can't actually sue her in court because in that release was a clause that they were not going to ever sue Maxwell. So we'll see if that's voided. We'll see what happens. But I certainly hope there is resolution. Do you think it was the right thing for her not to testify? We've seen these high profile uh, 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 defendants lately who have made the choice to testify in their own defense. Kyle Rittenhouse, for example. Uh, do you think that that was the right choice for her? I do. I don't think that there was any real defense that she personally could have offered here. But what I also think is possible is that at this point, the prosecution is definitely using this verdict to ask her or potentially ask her to cooperate, right? So and theoretically, if there's other criminals they want to go after, this is a huge conspiracy case, they could be asking her right now to cooperate with this guilty verdict in hand. The fact that she didn't testify actually helps her because if she were to now at this point offer to testify in the future, there wouldn't be conflicting testimonies. And do you think that that would play in at all to her sentence? What do you think realistically her sentence is likely to be? She could theoretically spend the rest of her life in prison. Do you think that that's likely to happen? I don't think it's likely. We don't know here because federal judges have enormous leeway in deciding sentencing. They could take into account that these victims who were underage also allege that she was participated in the actual abuse, even though that wasn't one of the charges. But I do think here that they're going to fight as hard as they can to reduce the sentencing. And the million dollar question, will she cooperate? Will there be other charges brought against other people based off of her cooperation, which would reduce the sentencing? All right. The story is not over yet. Angela, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.